Hello everybody. Well, I looked at my clock and my calendar. It's Tuesday afternoon, uh, 8 o'clock p.m. in the evening. I've had two naps today. I've read the word three or four times today since about 6 o'clock this morning. Uh, let me tell you a little story. I'm trying to... Uh, I'm trying to be spiritual, but not too high for this reason. Let me have a sip of my fresh coffee. Mmm. Boy, that's good. Fresh coffee with sugar-free French vanilla. This has actually happened to me. Experiences of my calling at 30 years old and 44 years in the ministry. Uh, I taught in a church predominantly black. I was the only white male in the church. There was Hispanic, there was white Hispanic, 75% uh, black, males and females, but I was the only white male, and the pastor, Ron, was a friend of mine, a fellow musician. We became good friends, still are, and uh, he let me teach the adult class, and he would teach midweek in his home, and he came to me one day, and he said, Bernie, at midweek in my home, your 12 to 16 students in the adult class, or half of them are saying, we don't understand what he's saying. He's teaching over our head. And he said, could you bring it down a little bit? And I thought about it. And I said, I don't think he asked me to teach milk, but he did ask me to not teach so lofty or so spiritual or so high. And I thought for a second, I said, no. I can't bring it down. He says, why not? And I says, you have two or three people of those 16 in the class that can teach milk. If you want them to be brought up on the sincere milk of the word, you don't want them to mature or grow to rightly dividing and accurately handling the word of truth, give the class to one of those that can teach milk. But I said, I have to teach where the Spirit tells me to teach the above upper level maturity so that they know there is that level to go to or attain to. So I said all that to say this. There are men out there that have devoted their life, they're scholars, they have their masters, they have their doctorates in theology. They're not born of the spirit. This is a spiritual book. God is one spirit holy. And if you're not born of the spirit, you can have vast knowledge of theology, history, archaeology, you name it. One thing you lack, Nicodemus, and that was my previous teaching, to be born of the Spirit, to see or to enter the spiritual kingdom of God. So I said all that to say this. That was three minutes worth of yakking. I want to take you to Ephesians and bring out the point about being spiritual, one spirit born of the spirit, to understand what the spirit's doing, to have the mind of the spirit, okay? I want to start with uh, Ephesians. If you're following me, I'm reading a King James 1611, my favorite book to read. I learned how to read in a King James Bible, but I do study in Amplified. I do study Revised Standard. Uh, 52 to 72 and older. I looked at a new revised standard today at Bookman's and Ephesians 1.5, they put adoption back in where it was not in there in the older 52 to 57 window, 20 years and older. And they put it back in for popularity of sales. The Greek word does not translate to the English word adoption. The Greek word is two Greek words put together, like I put English words together, like heart, mind, and spirit, soul, or mind, heart, and soul, spirit. 
uh, that Greek word is two Greek words, and when you take the two Greek words and bring them to English, a placing a son. It's a sonship calling, stewardship, sonship, placing, calling. Enough of that. Ephesians 2.21, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into a holy temple in the Lord. Antichrist is going to build the third temple in Jerusalem. We are the holy living temples of the Lord. That's why he held up the cup at the Last Supper and said, this cup is the New Testament. The cup, we are the clay living human cups full of the spirit word when you're born of the spirit. We are the living temples. We are the human clay cups full of the spirit word. The cup is the new. The blood took care of the sin so we can enter. And that's where I'm going next. Now I'm going to talk about the spirit in Ephesians 2, 17 and 18. It reads like this. I'm not trying to get too spiritual on you. If you're saved and you know you're saved, you're indwelt by the Spirit of Christ, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and that the El Father raised him from the dead, you're saved. Now it's time to grow into a living temple, mature on the meat of the word, rightly dividing and accurately handling the word of truth, the spiritual word, spirit word. God is word. God is one spirit. God is spirit. Okay. 217 of Ephesians, and came and preached peace, the gospel of peace, the mystery, the hope. The gospel and the mystery are connected. They go together. To you which are afar off, that's Gentiles, and to them which are near, that's Jews or Israel, Israel more than Jews, okay, the true Israel. Descent, bloodline descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through David, through the Lord Jesus Christ. But that seed is spiritual. There's a bloodline seed and there's a spiritual seed. Okay, verse 18. For through him we both, both the far off and the near, the Gentile and the Jew, are equal now. It's humanity, all humanity. Both have access by one spirit unto El Father. King James says, the Father. I X out the and I put El, first strong and almighty, El Yan, highest, Eloah, supremely worshiped, and it's El Father. And we have access by one spirit. One spirit, okay? Now, uh, let's jump over here to the fourth chapter of Ephesians. And here we find unity twice in verse 3 and verse 13. 3 plus 10 is 13. And what does it say? Unity of the Spirit. And I add one because we just read access by one Spirit. So it's not wrong to say unity of the one Spirit in the bond of peace, the gospel of peace, the mystery of hope. Okay, as I read on, there is one body, one spirit. Okay, now I got a true witness. I got one spirit in 218, and I got one spirit in 44. True witness. Plus, I got the third because I added one spirit to the spirit before this spirit. <laughs> it's about the spirit. Can you get it? The greatest revelation you can get is one spirit. I got nine minutes here. I got to read. And I have a song, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, one God and Father of us all. Okay, uh, that's it's a cool song too. It's got a good groove. All right. There is one body, there is one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one washing baptism of the Lord. Titus 3, 5, washing Renewing regeneration of the Holy Spirit word of truth is the washing within, an inside washing. 
One God, El Father, verse 6. One God. Does the Bible really say that? I think it does. I believe it. One God, El Father, of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all dwelling. Romans 8, 9 through 11. Without Christ dwelling in you, you're none of his. Ten minutes here. I got to jump down. 412. For the King James says perfecting is maturing. Maturity. The only thing perfect is God, spirit word, and his son. The one human being that was perfect. All the rest of humanity has sinned and come short of the glory of God. They're born with the spirit of disobedience. Okay? And I won't I won't chase that rabbit. I'll stop there. For the maturing of the saint sons, for the number one doing of the ministry, for the edifying of the one body of Christ till we all come to the unity. I got my true witness on unity. Unity up in 4.3 and unity in 4.13, till we all come to the unity of the faith in and of the spiritual knowledge of the Son of God. I added spiritual to knowledge unto a mature man, unto the measure of the stature of the likeness of the fullness of Christ, anointing power, authority in you. I added a lot of words there. That ye hence be no more children. Pow! I just closed the Bible. And we've got spirit three times for major doctrine. This is a spiritual book. I don't care if you've got a doctorate and you've been reading the word all your life. If you're not born of the Spirit, you do not comprehend the Word of God spiritually. You can't. And I was born of the Spirit. I hickamo shundied and ran the church and jumped and hollered and screamed and cried. And I said, you'd never see me doing all that stuff. And the Lord made me eat my words. And that's exactly how it happened to me jumping up and down like a pogo stick, laughing and crying, tears running down my face, dripping off my nose, trying to speak in English, and I couldn't. All I could do is baby talk. <laughs> the Spirit took over my tongue and my voice. And to this day, 44 years later, I speak privately in the shower, privately in the car, privately on the mountaintop. And I gave it a word prayer language, speaking in tongues or languages or prayer language. Hikamo Shundai. I Hikamo Shundai. Love you. 13 minutes. Eugene Bear, spiritual book. Paul was trying to please the one spirit, God, who is spirit word. He wasn't out to please man. He was to establish the spiritual authority and power and almighty glory of God. B. Period. Eugene Bear on YouTube. It's spirit, one spirit, one spirit holy, one spirit holy, truth, light, good, word, honest, life. Bye.